One of the best things about Europa Universalis 4 is that no matter how many times you're gonna play a nation, it's gonna be a completely different outcome. And one of the things that makes that happen is the different mission trees that nations have. And that's exactly what we're gonna be going through today. I'm gonna show you the best, most fun, and most powerful at the same time mission trees within the game. And trust me guys, some of these picks are really gonna shock you. I'm pretty sure at least half of these you have never even realized are as fun as they are. Also, if we get a thousand five likes on this video I'm gonna do another one on the most powerful formable nations there are coming in from the northern wastes of the European continent is the nation of Riga now Riga does have a very unique mission tree and play style because Riga via its insane mission tree has the ability to play all with just one city or below five cities in any case it can get some of the most beautiful modifiers imaginable including developer city that gives it six thousand manpower force limit plus 20 flat defensiveness basically a free fortification in its capital a buttload of development 60 yearly tax income flat and many other modifiers not only that though raising Liriga's defenses gives you subjugation TB on uh, the Livonians and the Teuton so you can stay as a city but have massive vassals to protect your land a lot of other missions give a ton of uh, development the ability to join the HRE despite not having actually bordered any HRE provinces. This is to signify the historical pertinence of the city of Riga to the Hanseatic League and the protection that came alongside being a part of the Hanseatic League. And to go alongside with that, you also get the connection with the Hansa, which eventually leads down the path of selling indulgence, presence in Lubeck node, and your very own unique reform for the tier 1 reform, which makes Riga in the only nation in the game that is both a republic and a theocracy at the same time because of that particular reform. Riga and pretty much all the other nations featured today I've already covered. You have linked to those videos in the description below if you like to see me play out these nations that we're talking about. And up next we have news from Italy because Florence is up for grabs boys. Starting off as a three province minor, Florence does have a unique flavor. Added a little bit earlier than changed afterwards the mission tree for the Florentines is unique because it offers a lot of Herman and modifiers that allow it to become an economic powerhouse with missions such as the Medici bank ledgers allowing you an extra 0.5 interest per annum and state maintenance meaning you can potentially have with certain ideas afterwards unlocked the ability to get 1% loans forever not just the Bergen loans but for the rest of the campaign some monuments will need to be conquered in order to achieve that too but I'm sure some of you guys know what I'm talking about. The left side of the mission tree revolves around getting claims around the Italian peninsula and as such making it easier for you to unify Italy and play as them afterwards. Plus you also have uh, unique city modifiers like Firenze's trade power production efficiency and tax modifier. The Academy of Bran that offers one extra diplomat and prestige decay minus 2%. Couple that up with the Santa Maria del Fiore monument that offers another 1% prestige decay and advisor cost reduction and you can essentially stay at 100 prestige for the entire campaign it will not by default have any decay you essentially negate all the decay and will passively moving towards 100 prestige which is a unique feat that not all nations can attain in the game speaking of unique feats Mali is up next and I know what you're thinking Ludi you said this is gonna be the most powerful mission trees I also said they're gonna be the most fun mission trees okay and nothing says fun as the starting situation of Mali. Now, as you guys know, Mali starts in a pretty bad spot. If you don't know how to navigate playing as Mali, you will completely collapse. The mission tree that Mali starts off with allows you to fix their situation, get rid of the multiple rebellions that keep triggering your country, and turn this insanely difficult start into a really fun fight for survival, because sometimes nations that challenge us and make it really difficult playing as them can be the most fun ones. That is exactly why I personally am having a lot of fun whenever I play as Mali. And after you navigate the initial part of the mission tree that revolves around fixing your country, you do get permanent claims on most of the West and Central African parts. You get the ability to change your government rank to an empire. You get colonist settler chance and flat out gold. Some permanent modifiers and plus 10 permanent morale of armies and navies. So if you like to tag switch to another country, you always will have that extra morale of armies to boost yourself up. Next, 
is a nation that I think a lot of you have played a lot of. The Ottomans, the easiest and most powerful nation by far, come alongside with their very own insanely overpowered mission tree that give them the ability to start the campaign with four artillery pieces, meaning taking sieges and taking fortifications is going to be super fast for the Ottomans because they have four artillery pieces. They can also barrage forts, bringing down the walls of Constantinople significantly faster than anybody else could. Let's not forget they also have the unique Jenny series that add up to that with the 50% assault fort ability. You get permanent claims all over the region and more importantly you get unique flavor like the defeat of the Mamluks is going to give you a unique CB that allows the invasion of the uh, Mamluk Sultanate. Once that's done and you hold their capital of Cairo for three years whilst their nation's at 90% war score you will get the uh, Mamluks as your Egyptian Ayalet for zero aggressive expansion you essentially get half of the Middle East because of this mission tree that's why that's possible same reason why you get permanent claims on the entirety of Arabia and campaigns into Yemen Adal Tunisia you can also get from your mission tree as a core Ayalet Morocco a ton of permanent modifiers like the uh, Barbary Pirates modifier until the end of the game you can get provincial trade power modifier plus 15 percent meaning you will always be one of the most powerful trade nations for some freaking reason the ability to upgrade a centers of trade along the Silk Road is one of my personal favorites and I think it's quite underrated as well as you get in Sari local trade power plus 20% and value plus 20% which is huge not to mention you can start a second golden age or prolong the one you have for 50 years the Ottoman Sisaya tax system which gives some of the most fun and unique modifiers and you can even get the option to change to Western heck units in the later part of the campaign plus Pax Otomana gives five admin efficiency flat and we all know admin efficiency is the best modifier you want to always be striving for now if you're really into goats you're gonna love Gotland over here because clearly they named their country after goats right that's that's how that works Gotland starts off as a one province pirate nation should you choose to go for that path when the game starts and to go alongside it you have two mission paths two different mission trees actually whether you want to reform and get a personal union over the Swedes the Norwegians and integrate the Danish lands as your own and become Denmark or stay as a pirate republic and go around the world raiding everybody's coastline while well, you have the mission trees to go alongside that terror of the Baltics would be an understatement the mission tree allows you to get the legendary pirate trait a unique trait for your leader permanent claims all around the place massive unique modifiers for different cities that you will be capturing as part of your pirate strongholds a buttload of mercantilism alongside those modifiers too depending on which pirate faction you're going to be going for you can also get unique permanent modifiers from your mission tree for said pirate uh, faction whenever they're in charge claims on every island in the mediterranean <laughs> permanent claims colonial range trade range and privateer efficiency permanent again and just like mali you get morale of armies navies permanent again alongside some uh, modifiers to increase your tortugan province monument whenever you do get your hands on tortuga suffice to say if you want to play as a pirate gotland is the nation to do so because of their unique mission tree that basically revolves around pirating around the world i would be of course remiss if i didn't have on this list the amazing mission tree that ethiopia has you have to realize that the thing that makes this mission tree really special is the fact that this is the first mission tree that paradox tinto started working on that diverged them from the old standard in which you just had mission trees that offered permanent claims right the origins dlc alongside the leviathan dlc were the first attempts of actually making proper mission trees that offered a lot of flavor and replayability not just freaking permanent claims everywhere and that goes to show why this mission tree despite not being the prettiest and uh when it comes to its placement for the icons it is really really fun so we have stuff that revolve for example obviously on some permanent claims at the start but then again we also get events that trigger now we don't know what these events do because when origins came out they didn't have the idea of showing what the event does in the mission tree itself that was added a little bit later down the line however the subjects of ethiopia event does have some special unique stuff and you know what i personally kind of like the fact that events don't tell you what they do it leaves a little bit more mystery for you to find out then you also have stuff like uh colonizing areas here with the siberian frontier mechanic namely 
specifically these parts allowing you to uh, reach the west and central african parts as the ethiopians you also get some unique mechanics from other events and you have for example the blessed empire that offers one of the strongest modifiers in my opinion in the game 30 percent manpower and true faith provinces slat can be combined with say for example the byzantine stuff and then you get the highest amount of manpower possible out of any nations in this game say if you go down the russian path later down the line you also get the solomonic empire government reform and the ability to restore the mighty Aksum nation via your mission tree as Ethiopia but more importantly it makes an area of the game which it doesn't see as much love in general and doesn't see that many players play here a really fun area to be enjoying and out of most of my games I think I've always really loved playing as Ethiopia because it's not the easiest of starts and navigating the mission tree really can turn you into a superpower super super fast in the early part of the campaign with the domination DLC Aragon also saw some change to his mission mission tree it has a brand new mission tree now that revolves around getting control of the mediterranean and not only that but you have the option of becoming a peasants republic an actual semi quasi communist nation slash republic in the middle ages well technically high middle ages early renaissance really the mission tree itself offers personal union restorations on portugal tons of permanent claims around the iberian peninsula even shipyards from the start of the campaign and the ability to expand into the Barbary states fairly early on. After you integrate Naples, you also get permanent claims on the Greek parts for expansion into the Balkans. The Consulate of the Sea event is still there. Plus, you now have the ability to build caravel ships via your mission tree. Caravel ships are unique ships that are significantly better than the regular ones that only few nations can build. I believe three nations can build overall in the campaign, one of them being Aragon because of their mission tree, which also from the same mission offers naval combat bonus off of own coasts making them a proper mediterranean behemoth you also get some tech cost reduction minus five permanent until the end of the game claim on the entirety of the french region you turn valencia into one of the strongest provinces in the game with this modifier here and you also get oral power cost minus five percent for 100 years remember that you can also get the castilian slash spanish missions after you form spain you play your cards right so this here is just a stepping stone towards building a better Iberia. With the earlier Lions of the North DLC, Norway also saw some massive changes and its mission tree is probably my favorite out of all the Lions of the North mission trees. Remember that once you've formed Scandinavia as Norway, Sweden, or Denmark, or anybody else, you will get a different Scandinavian mission pack. The Norwegian bit of the mission tree early on revolves obviously around getting your independence from the Danes, and then you get a couple of paths that allow you to expand into the new world, form a colonial empire, or just consolidate your holdings into the Scandinavian parts if you like to. Once you get the PU over the Danes that is easy to get via your mission tree, you also get the Crown of Denmark event that allows the country of Scandinavia to be formed without needing admin tech 20. So you can essentially form Scandinavia super fast if you started off as Norway compared to some of the other nations here. Theological Questions also offers you the ability to go down some different religious paths, some of them lesser known if you know what I mean. You also can change your rank to an empire rank fairly early in the campaign as well. And your marines get unique modifiers including shock damage received minus 10% alongside the Norwegian sailors naval doctrine which also makes your marines pretty strong as it is. And to top all that off you have a wide array of different privileges you can give from your mission tree and a ton of different events as well to help you improve your financial situation. If you want something really unique though, you will love playing as Majapahit has its own unique mission tree. Now Majapahit starts off with a lot of tributaries around, but it also starts off with the fall of Majapahit disaster, which is extremely bad. You get all power costs, liberty desire, monarch lifespan reduction. It's, it's, it's really bad. Now your mission tree initially lets you get rid of that disaster by preventing the historical collapse of the Majapahit. And not only that, but it also offers a permanent Diplar Relations plus one once you've done the fall of uh, Majapahit uh, mission or better yet prevent collapse mission. Once that's done though, the mission tree itself might not seem like a big one. However, the bonuses that it offers are really insane. You get the Majapahit campaigns, which
which is a unique CB. Initially, this is only going to be against other nations of Malai culture. Plus, it's going to make your tributaries into vassals. However, as you progress down the mission tree, you will get the Majapahit campaign CB against Chinese technology group nations and then against all countries. Now, the Majapahit campaign CB allows you to basically vassalize pretty much everybody once you've done subjugate the mainland, which is essentially subjugating these highlighted provinces within the Indo-Chinese Peninsula. You also can get the colonization from your mission tree of most of the provinces in Indonesia proper, so you don't need to colonize these with the exploration ideas or expansion ideas. The mission tree does it for you at a very steady pace. The entirety of all of these missions here allow the colonization of the Indonesian bits. You also have the ability to become an empire from the mission tree, and you get dev cost reduction minus 5%, which goes in hand pretty nicely with the other modifier that you have from the Prambarang temple that offers another global dev cost minus 10%. So you could say subjugate the world and only directly own the Indonesian bits that you can develop to sky high development if you like to. Now added with the more recent DLC, King of Kings, we also have Georgia with its own unique mission tree. Now the Georgians at the start have a pretty tough time and they have their own Georgian crisis. Now the mission tree of course will help you guide through the crisis and turn Georgia into a proper nation, make it strong again in the words of the famous uh, Georgian king Donel Dias Trumpicus. Once that's done, the rest of the mission tree is going to give you some claims around the areas around you, plus the ability to integrate better the provinces that are Armenian, as well as the fall of Sarai here when you fight against the hordes, you will get a modifier, whereas winning battles is going to give you 0.5 bonus army tradition. So even if you win a battle against a 1000 army stack, you get 0.5 army tradition per battle one. So if you just delete 20 stacks of 1000 units after the enemy recruited that, you're going to fill out your freaking army tradition, which is insanely powerful if, if you use it properly. Not only that, but dealing with the Komnenos leads you down a path which allows permanent claims on the entirety of Anatolia, as well as war score from battles modifier, war score versus other religions minus 10%, and permanent CB against heathens and heretics, and the heirs of the Romans event will let you move the Georgian culture into the Byzantine culture group should you like to, expanding your culture group by quite a few provinces within the Greek parts as well as the uh, southern tip of uh, Crimea of course. You also get a permanent army modifier plus 10% morale of armies, claims on the entirety of the Egypt region, and the best of the best, saved for last, the beacon of Christendom allows you war score versus other religions minus 10% permanent as well as opinion of countries with the same religion plus 20 and 10% manpower in true faith provinces should you have 100 provinces that are orthodox. Suffice to say starting as the Georgians might not be the easiest bit but starting as them might be the best path towards restoring the Byzantine Empire because you can get all those juicy modifiers from the Georgians and then after formed Byzantium which is of course the greatest mission pack in my opinion clearly and the Byzantine mission pack guys is just ridiculous. Redonkulous. I mean, actually redonkulous. Whether you form the Byzantines as Georgia or you start as the Byzantine Empire, the early part is going to help you out against the Ottomans, fight against the Ottomans, rebuild the Hexamillion walls, upgrade the Theodosian walls, permanent modifier upon permanent modifier, permanent claims on all of the former Eastern Roman Empire lands, including what you would imagine that would entail. But not only that, though, look at this. This thing is actually freaking beautiful and massive. I have an entire campaign on Byzantium, my guys. I recommend and you guys check out I'll link I'll leave a link to that in the description below the top part of course is more linear and revolves around expanding as well as some modifiers that get buffed as you do more missions so the frontiers modifier gives you morale of army stability cost modifier prestige global missionary versus heathens eventually you'll be able to merge the modifiers keep the previous uh, bonuses and get some extra including governing capacity prestige stability cost modifier and permanent power projection plus 10 alongside the ability to get the rebel sentiment fire more rarely than it did before, meaning you're pretty much set for a world conquest if you like to do one as the Byzantines afterwards. Remember, you also get the Roman vigor until the age of reformation finishes, which offers war score versus other religions minus 10%. So you could potentially finish a world conquest before the age of reformation finishes easily with this alone, as well as the modifiers from uh, the Malta monument and uh, Granada, of course, and others around the world. The theme system also gives you a unique government reform with tons of bonuses plus it branches out and allows you to go either down the professional 
army path or the mercenary army each with their own benefits once you unlock them you also can have some of the strongest navies in the world with the uh, greek liquid fire which probably historically was just um tar wasn't it definitely was petrol wasn't it boy restoring the pentarchy also does something now and it offers local tax plus 12 flat development cost reduction tax modifier percentage 25 percent in all five of the pentarchy locations and it disables the catholic papacy mechanic plus you can hold an economical council every so on years mending the schism is going to allow you to get all catholic provinces so all catholic nations will become turned to orthodox so all catholic nations will get an option to become orthodox and as such you unify christendom once more there's a lot of insane modifiers here like aggressive expansion impact minus 15 percent permanent until the age of reformation you can change your map color to have the actual purple of the romans a lot of economic modifiers that boost up your nation insanely and local permanent modifiers for various provinces too there's obviously a lot of other nations that i would like to talk about but i don't want to make this a two hours long video truth is that pretty much all the more recent dlcs have actually added insanely fun modifiers and insanely fun mission trees overall like trebizond again i know i didn't mention it but trebizond is definitely going to have an insane mission tree whenever the uh, next dlc is going to come out i'm not going to mention what the name of the dlc is you almost got me there because i almost did mention i might redo this video in the future once the final dlc for eu4 comes out but until that point check out this awesome video up next and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support 